Hey guys, we're back. NSFW version of new release Wednesday for July 5th. We are here at the ever lovely Painted Visions. <laughs> Seriously guys, this is one of our favorite places ever and we are super excited to be back with our special guest. Drum roll. Adam Martin. What's going on fellas? Ladies. Hmm. Everybody, how's it going? Good, it's yeah. going good. It's we're fantastic. in the comic store, we're happy. Uh, That's good. Yeah. yeah. A so, cool yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, things we need to talk about. Let's start it off with the big one the Inhumans trailer dropped. Literally. Literally, fucking <laughs> dropped. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to go. It is Poorly. not looking promising. <sighs> I'm not what? happy. No. Okay, can we talk about a couple of things here? Sure. Uh, let's start off with Forward. costumes. Oh my god. I, I, why can't they just hire a cosplayer to design costumes for these, these series? Like, it happens in every damn thing I see. Oh no, costumes are poor. Um, I mean, the guy that's playing Black Bolt, every time he was on camera, it looked like he'd been constipated for the last 12 years. <laughs> um, and I said from the get-go, if Medusa's hair's ever still, they are doing it wrong. She has the flattest hair I've ever seen. That wig looks terrible. Yeah, like, no. literally terrible dog crap. Like, I can't I cannot tell you how much I hate it enough. It just. And where was Lockjaw's mustache? I don't know, but you know, Lockjaw really seemed to be the only decent thing about the entire trailer. Only if you saw it on a really high definition, though. If you saw it like on your phone, it looked bad. Oh. Well, I saw it on my phone first, and I was like, mm. I don't think well, it mattered where it went. It's it just of, was bad. Kind of one of those comparative things. Like, you might work in a small group, and there's that one person, you're like, yeah, they're not too bad, but then if you get them in like the larger population, you're like, oh, no. I think Lockjaw's the same way. Like, within the context of what you see, you're like, Okay, well, that's sort of the saving grace, but in terms of every other trailer that we've seen for things, it just looks like crap. All of it looks like crap. I don't know. I kind of feel like we've talked about this before on how we were getting an Inhumans movie, mm -hmm. and I don't know what happened, and it oh, got uh, uh, canceled. And lots then... of pissing contests. Lot, just... There's a lot that we can look into, but mm -hmm. yeah, there, there, there's two people who didn't get along, and eventually they just kept getting in, in, in fighting, and... Then he was lost. Yeah. <laughs> well, they lost. I and we got an ABC yeah. show. I don't think they're going to be winning anytime soon. And did we know what time slot? I didn't see what time slot was I in I would beginning. imagine it's probably going to take the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. when it's in the off season. Yeah. Because like as show, long as it's 9 o'clock, you know, yeah. we'll get a little more mature. And I think that's what killed Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the first few seasons. Because I was hyped for that. It's so much better now. But they had an 8 o'clock slot, and 8 o'clock is more family friendly. Yeah. So once they moved to 9 o'clock, they were able to, like, oh, here, let's get someone. I'm like, thank you. Yeah. So. Well, I don't know. And, and just in terms of the uh, choice of actors, they have a lot of unknowns. And then, yeah. like, the one guy who I don't think anybody is going to be able to look at and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. You have Ewan Rian, who played a hero in the show Misfits, who started off really awkward and then turned into the sex icon which if you can believe it like he he truly was like the hunk in the show <laughs> every girl was like no yeah. bastard yeah. Um, well and then i was super excited because he was going to be on game of thrones yeah. and then he turned into yeah, ramsey bolton and i'm like fuck and I, I it's so hard like i, I will yeah, watch I the first it. episode no. eating a hot dog i'll be like mm -hmm. you know, i'm all, i'm, I'm okay with playing maximus the mad Sorry. though like, at least he's playing somebody that's just equally batshit crazy and a bad yeah, guy. Yeah, but when that's you true. still have him just kind of in the back of your mind, like, he just he's never died on Game of Thrones. It's... He's over. I don't know. He's I playing mean, a villain forever. I will forever give anything the benefit of the doubt. I will watch an episode. I will see where it goes. And then I will make... My judgments from there, um, I have always gone back to the whole, like, you know, broke back Batman. I really wasn't quite sure how Heath Ledger was going to do in that. <laughs> and it turned out great. So, I'm not going to judge the acting yet. I'm not going to judge the plot yet. I'm judging the costumes. They're shit. For every freaking minute, it's on. Yeah. I just want to understand Black Bolt. Because he doesn't, he can't talk. When are we going to get Black Bolt's mask? Like yeah, he's that gonna... too. But, but that how are you going to work with trailer. Black Bolt? When he got Billy Clubbed in the back and he grunted it. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, they got one thing right. Surprisingly, I, I can't understand that. Got no legs. You have the major guy, <laughs> and he can't even talk. I mean, well, he got legs. He just don't got like them centaur feet or you know, singer feet like he's supposed to. <laughs> right. I want them hooves. No. Yeah. Why so, did Netflix save us? Yeah. So we'll, we'll see, see what happens. We'll see. But we're giving see. it. We're giving it. Uh, uh, for me, I'm gonna give it this. I'm not quite here. I'm giving it this. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That face. What about you? Uh, I'm gonna give it the. Uh, Eggs in the wall for three weeks. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Good 
All right, guys, we got more to talk yeah. about. Okay, I think I'm going to be a little more of a spaz moment. I'm going to try to convince yes. Brandy that it's awesome, but we finally got the trailer for season three of Rick and Morty. What you say you haven't seen? I've seen a handful of okay. episodes, nothing really in order, and it hasn't been something that's quite pulled me in yet. I'm not opposed okay. to it, but it, I, I, again, I think I've seen maybe three different episodes, and so I really... And it's a hard show, because yeah. it really need, does progress with the story, and right, that's what I so like. I need you to get me hyped for this. Like, I need you to explain to me why it is that I need to be watching Rick and Morty. Well, first of all, it's Rick and Morty. No, so second of all, <laughs> so Rick and, um, is... A crazy genius scientist who's an alcoholic and he has a lot of mental illness and I okay. kind of like how they kind of press on that throughout the show of he had a wife and we really haven't gotten quite the whole story of what happened to the wife mm -hmm. his daughter believes that she he, he left her but really I think there's so much more there's so much more to the story okay so he has his grandson Morty who he goes on adventures with it's kind of like back to the future with like on you know LSD or something it's just they go to all these crazy planets they always get in shenanigans okay. it is not for children it's like anime so this oh. is very adult it's very adult. talks about like just lots of lots of fart humor very adult humor okay. you know and, and lots of lots of sex with uh, aliens so this happens a lot <laughs> okay they get tricky a lot so you sorry but yeah, I love Rick and Morty. I love it. I, I was so excited to see the trailer. And, and um, the emotional aspect of the show I enjoy too is, you know, you have a very dysfunctional marriage. You have very dysfunctional grandkids. And, and even Rick, like nobody in the show is perfect. They all are broken. And I like that because there's no Mary Sue's in the show. Okay. It's like everyone has a problem, but they all work together to fix the problem. And for a cartoon that's on Adult Swim, I kind of feel like, for me, it's perfect. I watched the hell out of the show. So, okay. season three, July 30th. I'm so excited. Okay. Watch it. I will try. The few episodes that I've seen so far have been really deep, mm. um, just in terms of content. And I think I missed some of the, the pod humor. And so, because it was this moment of Rick, I guess, turning himself in to like intergalactic oh. police or something. And it wasn't was something emotional. that I had built up to. I had not yeah. been emotionally invested in this. It really didn't grab me, I think, the way it probably grabbed most people. And, and that's I, what I recommend, I guess, with you mm -hmm. saying that is I've watched it from episode on, what one on. Okay. So when that happens, mm -hmm. everyone, when we had a viewing party for the episode, and, like, mm -hmm. my friends came over. I mean, we were like, and people got quiet. We were like, oh, my God, because... We had built up to that moment. Okay. And but if you just watch it, you're not gonna. You'd be so, like, "What's this crazy guy with throw ball over his face? We don't know." Yeah. What you're saying is that I need to start from the beginning. Yes. And really see what this is all about. I guess with I guess with the. Guess who met the director this do. weekend? Who do. met the director? Shout out to Brian Newton. I got to meet the director. What's up, Brian Newton? It was a pleasure meeting you at BlurCon. Can't wait to see season three. All right. We can get Swifty. Well, I getting Swifty is about train, defecating guys. on the floor. That's <laughs> it, 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 awesome. <laughs> hey guys, so last week I know I was Brandy the Butcher and I pretty much destroyed everybody's name for my top pick. So I'm going to try and be a lot better about that this week. My first pick of the week is going to be Ghost Wolf Horde of Fangs number one. All right, let's work with me here. El Torres is the writer, and wow, Wanfra MB is the artist. So, you guys, I, I pretty much choose uh, things that call to my inner self, and warriors, Vikings, all of that calls to my my personal inner self. Yeah, if y'all haven't seen, I've worn this Thor Mjolnir hammer I think every day since like the inception of New Release Wednesday. So warriors are my thing. And that's what's going on in Ghost Wolf Horde of Fangs number one. You have these people who are getting along great in their village and then shit goes down. So um, I love bringing you guys number ones. I like getting you interested in something that's new, something that we haven't seen before. And I think this is something that's gonna be a little different than what we've seen before. So definitely check it out. Uh, my second pick, 
is Zodiac Star Force Cries of Fire Prints number one. It is by Kevin Panetta and art is by Paulina Genesho. Um, this has been something that's been around for a little while and basically they've taken storyline and, and kind of morphed and, and done new stories, new arcs. So if you haven't checked this out, it's actually kind of cool. It's one of the more kid friendly things that I am getting into right now. The first thing that I looked at when I saw it was the sort of um, like a Sailor Moon-esque um, storyline. So you have these magical girls, they are in high school, and when the whole thing has started, they are uh, already to the point where their magical powers have been put to good use. They have defeated every bad guy ever. And so now they're just trying to live a normal life, and eventually new bad guys show up and they have to make the decision, you know, do we step up and don these powers again? They're zodiac powers, so like Taurus and um, you know Pisces and Aries, and so their zodiac sign sort of influences what their magical girl power is going to be. So in this new one, they have already defeated one of their old Star Force members and her evil minions, basically they're her mean girls. And so now they're having to start back over again and defeat these new bad guys that are coming in. Basically, any monster or meanie that comes in, they're going to take care of it. They're going to kick some butt. So uh, it's fun. The artwork is really bright. It is vibrant and it draws you in. So I'm definitely looking forward to this new storyline. And my third pick, I told you guys in their short clip earlier, I love Lady Mechanica. I have loved Lady Mechanica since she first came out. It was one of those things where nobody has seen anything like it before. It was steampunk, it was gritty, but it was really beautiful. And Joe Benitez, who has basically started his own um, thing with this, has done the writing for it, he has done the art for it, he does all the covers, and his style is just beautiful. I think that's one of the big things for me. If I can't get into the art, it doesn't matter how good the storyline is, I really don't want to read it. And his artwork is so beautiful, like that's what drew me in at first, walking through my comic shop and seeing the issue zero on the shelf, just the picture that was on the cover, I had to have it. And I have been in love with it ever since. And the other really awesome thing that Joe Benitez does with all of his stuff is that he basically makes these little mini series. So he has that definite beginning, middle, and end. He knows where the story is going to go, so you're never going to get lost in why is this happening. It feels like it's getting drawn out. And with this one, uh, it's going to be a mini series. So there's only going to be three issues. So if you're running low on cash right now, can't afford to do a lot, you know you're going to be able to finish this storyline. Uh, Clockwork Assassin number one. Um, shows a character who we've seen in previous storylines who uh, partner is killed and so now everything is moving forward from there. How are they going to move forward? Um, super looking forward to this. I have been watching him on Facebook and waiting for this to drop for the longest time. So that is my top pick for the week. Hope you guys enjoy this much that I do. Alright, so we've been talking a lot about different things and now we're yeah. kind of getting to Disney. Disney World. Disney World. I love Disney World. Me that was too. like my favorite holidays as a kid. And I remember going on the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff all the time, that ride. And you mm -hmm. sit there and you're like, there's the Pirates. And I was super excited. And then they upgraded it where um, Jack Sparrow was in it. Yeah. Which made me excited. And as a child, you don't really, at least for me, I never really noticed the sex slavery like workers, like the winches. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of now Disney's kind of going, you know, we're a little more woke and we don't want to have a bunch of women on ropes and being sold into sex slavery. Let's yeah. take this down. Mm -hmm. I was super excited. As an adult, I feel like that is something that needed to be done. Yeah. And then you got the douchebags who are like, well, you know, historically. And we can't change this. And it's always been that way. So, yeah, you actually do have people now who are bitching about the fact that they are taking that out of the ride. It it just really, I'm, I'm at this point where I would love to know the people, how they were raised, why they act like that. If, I just want to go up to What's them and be like, can we have a conversation you? of, it's a Disney ride yeah. about pirates. Yeah. And, all, and it's, it's supposed to be fun. And, you know, of course, when you're younger, of course, people aren't thinking that. They no. don't know. But as adults, we, we're kind of more You have the aware. background knowledge. You and we're be not aware. saying that no sex tra trade never happened. Right. It just does it have a place in a Disney ride with a bunch of children. Right. I mean, there's there's a lot of things I think people could complain about. This truly is not one of them. Yeah. 
I feel like for you to complain about something so, I don't even know how to put this right now. It just, it just makes you look like a douche. It does. I really, I just, I'm so <laughs> shocked. Be I was, cause when it, I saw the article and I was reading it like, this is amazing. And then I did what no fool on the internet should ever do. You is read the comments, the didn't you? <laughs> oh, you never read the comments. It's like WebMD. You never Google what you have. You never go to WebMD because you're dying. You never read the comments because there's always going to be some shitlord on there who's just. <laughs> and then I done. want, I just grab my keyboard and I start like, you know, like I want to type so bad and I have to always step back and go, what am I going to write that's going to contribute to this other than you are fucked hard and that's not going to help write the situation at all so I turn off the comments and I walk away but I'm really excited to see that that and I'm hoping more and more rides and more and more people see things like this and yeah. go we're not taking away the historical accuracy no. of it we're not but you're not changing the overall feeling of the ride or what people will take away from the ride right and you have freaking, you have, I think, what is it? Jack Sparrow's still on it. And he's still, they still have them running around after the women to get in their skirts. I mean, it's funny. That's what yeah. happened to pirates. They're not taking away women entirely. They're just trying to make it more Disney friendly. Yes. And if you've seen it, go, go into the videos. It is a bunch of women who are tied up in ropes and they're auctioning them off. That's kind of messed up, but it was back then. People weren't as woke as they are right now. It's kind of like, oh, that's funny. Let's just do that. And now we have sex trade. And guys, sex trade is still a huge thing in this country, Absolutely. let alone the world. So it's not like we're saying ignore the issue. The issue should never be ignored. But you have little girls and little boys who are sitting on a ride and they're wearing their little Disney outfits. Is that something you want a child to see? This is the happiest place on earth, guys. Right? Let's God. just let it be a little more G-rated. Calm thine tits. For the children. Yes. For the children. Calm them. Hey everyone, so I'm going to give you my top three picks, and we're going to start off with, what else? The Walking Dead. I am super excited. So 169 is coming out, and we all know Robert Kirkman is a master at it. Oh my gosh, I love story writing. So where we left off last issue, of course, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. This terrifyingly terrible moment of Rick and Andrea and in the grave and you kind of just sit there reading this going like does this did this just happen you know it's it you get really and then with Sherry and what Rick did it's all these emotional roller coasters so in this issue it's called like Dwight is he gonna step up basically it's, and basically what it looks like and the front cover shows Dwight is putting a gun to Rick's head so we all kind of know that at least I want to believe that this is there's something else going on what Rick did to Sherry of course is gonna come, ripple into this book and the emotional distraught and if you watch the series and you don't read the books there's a lot of different things like it's really a different universe now so I, what I enjoy about the novels is that I can it feels like it's new and it's not just a show so Dwight in the in the novels are kind of like a little more psycho, just a little more, but he's also been the leader of the Saviors, and he's not the leader anymore, and the Saviors don't really have a leader right now. And, you know, Negan had his, like, five-page monologue of, don't you want me back? And, of course, nobody wants Negan back. He's a terrible human being. So was this volume mean that Dwight is going to be the Savior um, leader again? Who knows? I'm really excited to read this. I love The Walking Dead. And I waited a long time for this one. All right, so my next pick will be Star Wars number 33 by Jason Aaron, who I, oh my gosh, I love Jason Aaron. I think he's one of the best writers out there. I totally enjoyed this series. We have Luke and Leia right now who are deserted on, <laughs> on a... Um, on an island, and you had in the previous ones with Dr. Afra, where Luke is kind of lost in his world and he doesn't know what he's going to be, and he gets this parasite artifact with a Jedi consciousness, and he's just kind of trying to get through everything. And in this volume 33, you have Luke and Leia kind of finally have a moment to themselves together where they have some alone time and they're being people are after them and they're they're just trying so I'm really looking forward to having kind of like that brother sister conversation where they kind of you know just together they have a legitimate you know she's the rebel leader she's still princess Leia I'm really curious how this story will evolve with them together if you're not reading it you definitely need to 
my number one pick is definitely everyone knows I am an addict of Thor's my world Thor comics that was my first comic books I ever read were the Thor so Thor Ragnarok is coming out and everyone knows I love the prelude comics that Marvel does and they're doing one for Thor Ragnarok so it's one out of four is coming out and it looks like they're going to revisit the story of the Hulk they're kind of going to let everyone know what's going on after the dark world with Odin Loki and Thor I mean we all know Loki took over as you know all father and everyone's kind of wondering where the hell Odin is I just want to know how the hell Hulk ended up anywhere near Thor when the last time we saw him was in Ultron and he was like leaving his love of his life in, in, in a plane very anticlimactic I know so how did he get there I'm kind of hoping these four volumes prequels prepare us for this so I am super excited for it so those are my top three picks and I would love to know yours so let's see it in the comics okay all right bye Spider-Man Spider-Man does whatever a spider can this is what you come for right yeah this this all right here so guys who's excited for Spider-Man I wasn't you weren't I, wasn't I really either. wasn't I'm very excited well see at first I really wasn't because honestly my first thought was oh Another Spider-Man remake. Yeah. Again. But I had faith. They let, I mean, Sony does the best decision they ever could. They front the capital mm -hmm. and they cash the check. Yeah. And that's all they do. That's true. And, and then we finally get the story with the MCU. We finally got our Spider-Man or also AKA Iron Man 4. That was just not what I think um, That's what I'm really nervous about. But from what I'm hearing the preliminaries, it's not. Okay. okay. So I'm looking forward to, they, from what I've heard, they're very sensibly using Iron Man in there. Good. I hope so. Which, I mean, I can understand that since he's such a young hero, they need to give a mentor role, but sure. I was worried they were going to flood it with him. So, well, we'll see. and Robert yeah. Downey Jr. has already stated that he's kind of getting a little leery of the role. He wants to step Hang back. Up his helmet. Yeah, so did Chris Evans, and who yeah. signed another contract. Well, oh, yeah. I think as long Dollar's as they're yeah, writing, speak. they do, but yeah. at the same time, I think they're both. Um, Robert has been doing it longer. Yeah, they're they're both well established enough actors that they know when it goes too far, it's just going to be a crap script. So we are getting into it, phase, you know, we're getting to yeah. phase four and five and six. You know, yeah. we're getting there that after a while they're literally going to be old men, and how long do they really want to do that? This is true. No, that is very true. It's like I fell on Facebook. Yeah. Kill, 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 kill them tastefully. That sounds yeah. like a really. Uh, <laughs> interesting turn on like a, a Metallica song. <laughs> Kill them tastefully. Um, so Tom Holland as Spider-Man, I'm actually, I think that was the one thing after I started seeing what he was doing to prepare for this role where I really kind of felt maybe this is going to be more than what I was initially expecting. He has really gone out of his way to train hard. I have seen videos online where he is doing some like Hardcore parkour, like well, flips I mean, he, and yeah, everything he, else. He did that before. Well, I know. He was that's how he kind of got. I'm just yeah. saying. Free auditions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's kind of nice seeing somebody in that role who you're like, man, you're probably doing most of your own stunts. Like, I can really envision you. Do you want to know another time that was really enjoyed? As Spider Man. Yeah. And Daredevil. Right? See, the Netflix series. Yes. Da, da, da. When you get somebody that can do it yourself, it, it makes it so much more believable to get immersed yes. when you're not doing CGI cuts and things like that. Yeah. Also, he seems genuinely excited enough to be Spider-Man. And he yeah. seems like a really nice guy, like a cool kid. Did you guys see him on Lip Sync, -sync Battles? Oh my god. So he and Zendaya so both were on Lip Sync Battle, and she did a Bruno Mars song, and she knocked it out of the park. But then he comes out, <laughs> and Rihanna. he does the Rihanna umbrella, and like in like tight... <laughs> It was nets. so brilliant. Oh my. It was the, whole the time. rain coming down and the splashing. Like, really? Yeah, it was so good. That was, I don't use the word brilliant lightly. That was fucking brilliant. Like, yeah. it was just so good. So just as a person, he seems really likable. He's somebody mm -hmm. that I think I would like to watch more on screen. Yeah. Yeah. He did a great job when we saw him last, even though it was kind of a smaller little bit like you really didn't see a whole lot of him but, but like, you got enough yeah. to feel comfortable yeah with so. and the moment the spider-man come finally comes onto the screen we have been waiting for this for for since like the mcu universe has been existing and we knew we couldn't in our minds we're like we're never gonna have spider-man yeah, yeah. and when he goes down he goes hi everyone i was like <laughs> flipping out. i mean everyone was cheering in the theaters because we finally got our spider-man we're like mm -hmm. yeah that was so, really good yeah so what are your hopes for this movie I just hope they do a really good job of setting it up. They, I really hope they let um, 
Oh god, but I can't think of the guy playing Vulture. Ke- Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. Yeah, I really hope they just let him just steal the show because yeah. have you seen any of his recent movies like The Founder? Oh, he okay, he's first such amazing. He does such a good great. job of playing somebody. You're like, well, you just go die. <laughs> Like, Which I mean, for evil. an actor to evoke a guttural response, they're doing their job. Oh, yeah. absolutely. They say that if you, whether you have a a love for a character or a hate for a character, as long as you're feeling something, then that character has done their job. If you're like, meh, yeah. then there's no point in that character even being yeah. there. And they have done that in movies in the past where they've taken characters, brought them in, and they wind up being these throwaway characters, and they do nothing for the plot, they do nothing for screen time, they're filler, they're fluff. And it's just kind of crap, and then it makes yeah. you not want to see that character on screen again. And I feel like there's a lot of characters that we will never see on screen again because they've already done that. They've killed it. Yeah. They basically shot down any interest that anybody would have in it. So um, I hope I hope that he just absolutely knocks it out of the park because yeah. as an actor, like again, he's fantastic. I think I've loved him in every single thing he's ever done. And that's one of the things I'm <laughs> a little I get a little wary on Marvel films is. I'm other than Loki, and everyone knows I love Loki, I haven't really enjoyed villains in the show. Mm-hmm. I haven't really, there hasn't been a villain that I've seen there, like all of the Thor villains, other than Loki, whatever. So to get kind of a very different villain like this, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm hoping for the best. I mean, I enjoyed Red Skull as a villain in the first Captain America movie. Yeah, he was, he was but, good. But they, I, they got I, don't know if, I don't know if they'll ever do that again. But, yeah. but hey, then again, remember, when he took his mask off, his face got big. <laughs> Do you think Red Skull's dead? I mean, who knows? I mean, yeah, of course he got thrown up into... He could be somewhere on Asgard for all we know. Yeah. But. And it's comic book related, so, you know, there's always never a way to course. bring them back. Exactly. And really, with, with Agent I'm pretty Coulson, sure you know. Red Skull has actually died several times. In that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all so right. I'm excited we're not getting... Uh, here, let's watch Uncle Ben die again. So the fact that we're not having to watch his origin story again, yeah. like we've had to with every Batman movie we've ever seen... And if I see those pearls fall on the ground one more time, I'm just going to turn off the film. So I'm excited not to have to see Uncle Ben die again, apparently. I think that's what they said. <laughs> I can imagine that if it's anything, you might get like a 30-second flashback. Like just a scene. Just like I don't, Maybe 10 seconds, we not 30. To 30 is too long. Uh, all right. 30 is too long. And we know he died. <laughs> we, we, yes, we know we that he's it. dead. Sorry, Uncle have Ben. Have like a memorial. So, yeah. Are you okay? I um, want more hot Aunt May. Marissa told me I love you. Okay, can we just go ahead and say something? Isn't she? She's Isn't gorgeous. she? And when they first cast her, I was like, oh, really? Is Aunt May just getting younger and younger? Well, yeah, <laughs> guess what, guys? You're getting older and older. <laughs> when you talk about the character of Peter Parker, who is in high school, to have Marissa Tomei, who's in her late 40s, early 50s. Makes like, sense. That's totally legit. It actually, to me, is more legit than Aunt May being in Grandma. her late 70s, early 80s. Like, how old was your mom and like what what family mm. dynamic is I, I do believe we there? want to get technical wouldn't she, isn't she his great aunt may technically oh he's getting really technical I'm just all right saying. so now we're digging super deep. nerd no. i'm just saying <laughs> it's a world of gray god damn it uh especially when it's the hair aunt may's hair so july out. 7th spider-man is coming yes. out i've got my tickets already yes. and i will definitely be doing a review of the film for everyone else who's going to go see the movie which i'm assuming is everyone here yes we got to do a review and i want to i want more aunt, hot aunt may t- talk you already in said comments. that you already said that she's she's so so he wants you to agree with him so he doesn't feel so alone so in the comments marissa i love you talk about how hot marissa tomei is so patrick doesn't marissa feel if you so could lonely. retweet this to your followers that would be really awesome <laughs> right, that would be even that would be <laughs> <great>. <laughs> Tag Patrick in a sick burn, that'd be pretty sweet, too. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, guys. Adam, back here at Painted Visions. Welcome to New Release Wednesday. We're going to talk about my favorite picks this week. Um, we're going to do them real quick and simple, but the first one's going to be Seven to Eternity, number seven. This book by Remender has just been a really crazy ride of really crazy ups and downs, crazy... I'm using crazy a lot because this book is crazy. Uh, but you get a lot of really interesting people with some interesting powers and... There's this one guy named Adam, ironically, but um, he's kind of the centerpiece to the story and how the story is unfolding. But last uh, we visited them, they're taking this villain through this swamp that they should have no business taking him through. Even he knows it's a bad idea. So we're going to find out how this works out for our ragtag group of heroes. All right. My second pick is going to be Iron Fist number five. I never would have thought I would enjoy an Iron Fist solo series. But this mini, or I don't know if it's a mini, I think it's ongoing now, but it's been really good. It's like a really fun kung fu movie um, where they're naming every move as it goes. Like, 
jabbing tiger paw as he punches the guy in the kidney. So this is just a really fun story. You're getting to know Danny in a very different way as he's trying to find the, his chi again since it's been severed from Kun Lun. So I'm really interested to see how this title is going to wrap up as I didn't really like, look forward to an Iron Fist book until I read it. And now I'm really enjoying it and I think everybody should pick this book up. Lastly, my number one pick, I'm really surprised to be back on this bandwagon, but it's going to be Batman number 26. I mean, we got the War of Joke and Riddles Part 2. These two characters, the way they set it up in the first title, I was like, oh, maybe they kind of confused us by calling it the War of Jokes and Riddles. Then by the end of the issue, you were like, oh my, Gotham City may never be the same. Um, I'm really looking forward to how this wraps up and affects everything as Batman is telling this story uh, retrospectively. So maybe we'll find out that there's a couple reasons why things are the way they are that we didn't have question answers to before. But I'm really looking forward to how this storyline is going to wrap up. I mean, Batman's been knocking out of the park of the DC Rebirth recently. So that's another one I highly recommend to come and pick it up. Again, this is Adam of Pain and Visions. Guys, appreciate it. I've missed you, Adam. And my boy, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about Inhumans trailer. Mm -hmm. We've talked about Disney. We've talked about Spider-Man, our top picks. We talked about a lot of cool stuff We talked stuff Rick and Morty. We talked know. about Marissa Tomei. <laughs> you think I didn't know what you were doing? <laughs> he talked about Marissa Tomei. Well, well I also did. I mentioned her briefly. You so no, but she's just going. You do that. I know. Shame on yeah. me. Shame on me. It's like encouraging the dog to pee on the little pee pad. Nope, go outside. So, guys. I uh, hope you. Just you... A bitch. Have you seen no. the wrestler? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Have you seen the wrestler? Yes, oh we God. saw the wrestler a while ago. Oh, okay. My cousin Vinny. All right. Okay, go. Just go. Oh Let's go. Gosh. All right, guys. This was a fun episode. Yeah. Thank you again for letting us go come to Painted Visions. Oh, thanks for coming awesome. in. Thank you, thank you for coming in to Painted Visions, guys. Yeah. Yeah. We're in Painted Visions. It's the best place ever. You should come. Yes, come Check get us. Money. Painted Visions. Patronage. Uh, over on mm, the Landscape Boulevard. Boulevard. Yeah. Um, hope you guys had a great, great, great 4th of July, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Peace. Boom.